all the way from Arrowhead Campus, Pastor Joe, the master teacher and communicator. Let's come on. Let's give our Arrowhead Campus a way we're allowed reach. Thank you. Welcome. Please give our awesome leader a hand, Pastor Marco, putting all this together for us. Such great vision. Are you excited for this new year? Completely excited. We're so glad you're here. Wave hi to our online community. They're probably watching right now. Tell them, get here. You should get here. We're very excited for this year because this year is a year of growth. Are you ready to grow this year? There actually has to be preparation to grow. Otherwise, you'll burst at the seams. You have to enlarge certain areas and capacities that need to be enlarged. And during impartation is going to be that time. And so we're going to come in impartation ready to be filled with God's word, ready to hear a word from the Lord. Uh, ready to grow and, and ready to get our assignments for the new year. Amen? Amen? You've been fasting for 14 days now, and you've been standing for four minutes, so that's okay. 14 days into your fast, you have only seven more days, and the fast is over. What I enjoy about the fast is I enjoy catching people cheating on the fast. The Holy Spirit always puts me in the right places like that. I walked into one of our members eating a big mochaca burrito the other day, and I just, she was terrified that she saw me. And I said, what are you doing? The pastor, my blood sugar, she said, my blood sugar. <laughs> well, that'll fix it for sure. That'll fix it. You can be seated. <laughs> oh, if you break the fast, you just jump back on, right? You'll be doing this for the rest of your life, so this is all just practice, amen? There are some side effects that are listed in the Mayo Clinic website, and some of you may be feeling the side effects of fasting. Um, some of you may be experiencing chapped lips. That's what I got right now. Some of you may be experiencing excessive sweatiness, maybe uh, diminished concentration, hunger pains, fatigue. Some of you may be experiencing some dizziness. Some of you put it on chapstick right now. I see you right now just putting on You're making my lips dry just watching you. Some of you may be experiencing insomnia because of the fast. No, no, no one's doing this. Irritability. <laughs> Nausea. Constipation. Dehydration. Headaches. Malnutrition. But don't worry, you're more spiritual than ever, I promise. And if you happen to die from these symptoms, well, you'll be closer to God than you could possibly imagine. You can fit Your mission was accomplished. I'm no stranger to fasting. I began fasting in my early walk with God, and I did this um, because the devil was always laying traps for me. And I would always fall into... Uh, these traps um, day after day, usually right after service, as soon as the service is over, I'd, I'd go and just fall into these traps. It was a cycle that was going on, and, and I was just a, not even a year in the Lord. And I started to strategize, and I said, well, I need to move away from my city and go to another city. And so I moved uh, to, the, to the west side of Riverside to escape um, the devil. 
I was a baby Christian. I didn't know. I... And so I moved to escape, and I said, I'm going to move into my mom's house because I know probably no demons bother her. I, she's, just, she's just an old lady, so I'll be safe there. But, you know, word got around. I don't know how, but I would get strange visitors at, at my mom's house. They would come there, and it would always be uh, strange women in strange clothes. Back then, they used to call, uh, these women used to wear these tight shorts called biker shorts. Today, they call them yoga pants. And there would be strange women that would come in these erotic clothes, and somehow they found out that I, tat I used to tattoo and they would come to the door, and I remember this one girl came, and she said, I, I, want, I heard you do tattoos, and she had these little shorts on, and I don't do tattoos no more. I serve, I serve Jesus. And she says, well, I serve Jesus too. I say, you do? Well, all right. I wasn't married at the time, so... I was looking for a wife, and <laughs> come on, you. <laughs> I said, well, you love Jesus, too. I said, do you go to church? She said, no, I don't go to church. She says, matter of fact, I'm a witch. I said, you're a witch, and you, and you serve Jesus. How does that, how does that work? She says, well, I'm a white witch. I said, you mean like Glenda the Good? <laughs> so I said, what kind of tattoo do you want anyway? She says, I, I want a dragon tattoo right here in my upper thigh. Exactly. <laughs> Pop, mission failed, fell again. And these traps were set for me because the devil didn't want me to grow. He didn't want me to grow in my walk with God. And so someone at the church advised me to fast. And back then, we just, they didn't mess around. They don't do, do a YouTube fast or... Uh, some of these hokey fasts, video game fasts, or I don't know what you guys are doing. They, they did fast until they started to look like skeletons. <laughs> Only water. And so they told me to fast, and they told me don't come out to you to get a breakthrough. And so after one week of a full fast, I discovered that fasting is extremely hard, <laughs> especially without the help of illegal substances. Like it's easy to fast on methamphetamines, right? Real easy. But by the fourth week of my full fast, I begin to hear God's voice more clearly, more distinctly, and I remember God saying this, I was so skinny and so hungry that I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, are you still thinking about women? No, no, no. Are you still thinking about drugs? No, not at all. Mission accomplished. There are some demons, some strongholds that you can't overcome except through fasting. There are certain types of demons that have to be addressed through the fasting process. And there's no escape from it. There's no alternative mo a a way to do it. And so today... God gave me this message for you, and it's titled, Fasting Through the Wilderness. 
fasting through the wilderness. How many feel like you're in a wilderness right now? Just raise your hand. All right. One thing to mention before we dive into the word is that in the wilderness, your menu must change. God's people went through the wilderness. What they ate changed. Your diet changes in the wilderness. And so we see here in Matthew, we see the diet of our Lord and Savior change or shift when he enters into the wilderness. So we're going to watch Jesus, the perfect example, how he mastered the devil and mastered the wilderness through fasting. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, the end of the chapter is in verse 17. And if you turn the page into chapter 4, it continues the story of Jesus when he got baptized and went into the wilderness. So we're going to look at those few segments of verses here tonight. Is that okay? You guys are really quiet. You okay? At Arrowhead, we're really loud. As I don't even preach until they get loud. Amen. Matthew chapter 3, verse number 16. It says, after his baptism, talking about Jesus, as Jesus came out of the water... The heavens were open. I love when God opens up the heavens. That's the place you want to be. When there's an open heaven, that's the place you want to be. The heavens were open, and Jesus saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. Powerful. And if that wasn't enough, in verse 17 it says, A voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son who brings me great joy. How powerful. How awesome is that? Turn the page. Then Jesus was led by the same Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus fasted and became very hungry. And during that time, the devil came and said to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, Tell these stones to become loaves of bread. And if Jesus, of course, responded, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the devil came again and again. In these verses, we see a climatic shift in the life of Jesus. This is his first major appearance in the Gospels. He's making his debut to the world. He's there with his cousin John in the Jordan River. The last time he saw his cousin John, they were in the womb. When Jesus showed up, John in the womb was filled with the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit was there with them on the Jordan, in the Jordan River when Jesus was getting baptized. So this was a powerful reunion of family going on. The assignment was coming into fruition. The, the prophetic word was coming, and it was, it was coming into an intersection. And it was a, a great, great moment to be. When Jesus was baptized, 
The Bible says that the heavens were opened. The Bible goes on to say that the Holy Spirit came and settled on Jesus. And then a voice came from heaven, the Father, and he affirmed who Jesus was. It was his beloved Son. It was a powerful moment. But quickly after that finished, Jesus finds himself in the wilderness with the devil. And not only that, he's in the wilderness with no food and no water. So it goes from this huge celebratory moment to a life-threatening moment. And Jesus may probably, perhaps be wondering, how did I get here? I haven't even picked up my baptism certificate. <laughs> I thought I was doing the right thing by getting baptized, by joining a DG, by going to Holy Warriors, by getting back with my wife, by uh, being a good father. I, I thought I was doing the right thing. So why am I in the wilderness with the devil? Sometimes it's harder to do what's right. Opposition comes when, you, when you're tempting to clean your life up, to change your life, to change yourself, to become a better father, to become a, a better husband. The devil comes. The wilderness is a place that is dry. It is a desolate place, a deserted place, an uninhabited place, a solitary place, a lonely place to be. And demons thrive in places like this. Demons love when we're dry or when we're uh, deserted or uninhabited by the Holy Spirit or alone. He, he loves when we, when we get in or put ourselves in those places like that. Spirits will, uh, they thrive in those areas. They love it when we're in these places of, of the wilderness. The wilderness is a place where your commitment to God is tested. Your commitment is being tested. Nobody escapes this process. You've either been to the wilderness, you're in the wilderness, or you're going to the wilderness, but everyone visits this place. And your commitment to God is being tested there. And part of the test is this. Is, is God enough? Can you be alone with God? Or do you need a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Or you need money or you need a car? God needs to be enough in your life. And so the wilderness is going to identify who's number one in your life. The wilderness is the place where your strength is examined. How much you can endure. How much you can resist. The wilderness will test who will be the last man standing. Will it be the devil or that's chasing you or it will be you and the spirit of God that's inside of you? The wilderness will tell you, will you remain pure for God? Will you be faithful to his word? The wilderness will identify what degree of Christian you really are. All of this is discovered in the wilderness. 
and everybody goes through it. And you find out real fast how much Jesus you really got. Now, it was the Holy Spirit. If you want to blame anyone, blame the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that led Jesus into this place to face the devil. Now, this goes against all theology, maybe. It's a head scratcher. Why would the Holy Spirit lead Jesus to such a place to be tempted by the devil? Everyone has a devil to face. You have yours, I have mine. You face your devils while you are fasting. You face your devils under assignment of the Holy Ghost. You cannot fight devils eating chocolate cake, watching Netflix, making out with your girlfriend, playing Fortnite, you will, in the nightclub, you will not be able to fight devils in that state. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit drives Jesus through the wilderness to face what we face, devils. There are lots of them. Lustful ones, addictive ones, short ones, fat ones, cute ones, all shapes and sizes. And Jesus needed to be 100% man. He needed to experience what we experience, the temptations that we are tempted with. He had to be tempted with those two. So he had, but he, he had the high-ranking devil, the highest one there is, Satan himself. The ones we have are probably nothing. There's not even the devil. It's probably just a short little pudgy one <laughs> making you stumble. <laughs> the devil got me again, and there he is. <laughs> It's just some little guy. It was like God's best against the, against the demonic realm's best. Head to head. The Holy Spirit, one translation says, forces Jesus into the wilderness. So that Jesus can go through the wilderness, okay? Not around it. Some people are trying to avoid it altogether and not go through it. But you need to stop trying to go around what's been determined for you to go through. There are some things that you must go through. You're not going to take a shortcut. You're not going to take another road. God is going to make you go through some places. There are some things you got to th go through if you want to get to different places. There is no alternative route. you got to go through the thing. Your ministry will require for you to go through it. The ministry that God has for you is going to require you to go through some things. The people that you're going to reach, the people that you're going to lead to Christ, they will need someone who's gone through it. And so you're being prepped for ministry by the things you're going through. Make sense? How many are going through some stuff? Raise your hand. Amen. 
it's not what happens here that prepares you for ministry. It's what you go through out there that prepares you for ministry. Because we all look good in here. Look around. Look like everyone looks like saints. We're all like saints. <laughs> Angels. Perfect. I remember I took, used to take my crazy friends to church. What, what, how did you like it? They say, everything is perfect. They would say, everything is perfect. <laughs> what? It's easy to be anointed in here. It's real easy to be spiritual in here. In this environment, it's easy to be holy in here. But what prepares you for ministry, what prepares you to fight your devils doesn't happen here. It happens out there in the real world, in the, in the nine to five, at your house, at your job, in the marketplace, where you live, on your block, in your hood. That's what defines the real you. The real you is not the church you. The real you is the wilderness you. Oh, that's okay. You don't have to clap for me. That's okay. Who we are is determined by what we go through and how we handle it and how we come out of it. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to close here. You say, what, Pastor? It's 801. I want to go back to Matthew chapter 4 and look at verse number 2. The Bible says when Jesus, when, someone say when. When Jesus fasted. When Jesus fasted and became very hungry. How many hungry right now? Too bad, you can't eat. <laughs> when Jesus fasted, ta da da da, he became very hungry. During that time, what time? The time that he fasted. The Bible says that the devil came. The devil comes when your appetite changes. When your diet changes. The devil comes when you're no longer hungry for the things of the world or the things of your flesh. The devil comes when you become hungry just for God. That's when he comes. And what Jesus was showing us here and what God is showing us tonight is that the moment that Jesus entered into this fast and went into the wilderness, he was stepping into the ring. 30 years of pretty much complete silence, and he gets baptized. The Holy Spirit settles on him. God affirms him, and then he steps into the ring. He's showing us, and he's showing heaven. He's showing the people of that time. He's showing the demonic realm that I've come into this ring to come against you. 
And the way that I come against you is through baptism, through the Holy Spirit, through the affirmation of God, and through fasting. I put to death my members so that I can engage in a spiritual battle against a real devil who doesn't want me to live. So when you enter into a fast, the gloves are coming off. And the only way that you get out is to break your fast. That's called breakfast. <laughs> when, you, when you break your fast, you got seven more days. If you break your fast, you say, I can't handle it here. I can't handle the warfare. It's too much for me. And you step out. Interesting, though, is that demon ain't going nowhere. And so you could have the same demon in your life for years. I've seen people who have been born again for 15 years with the same sex devil in their life. Because they get out of the ring. You can't get out of the ring. You have to stay in the ring and fight the devil that's been assigned to you. Your mama can't fight it for you. Your sister can't fight it for you. Your pastor can't fight it for you. That demon is there for you to fight, for you to learn to fight. Oh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. You got a devil to contend with. And if, you, and if we think we can just lollygag our way through it, you know, the Western church is kind of a weak church. The Western churches, most of them are weak. They're just going along with it. Going along with the world system. Going along with temptation. Going along with whatever the world is delivering up. But God is looking for a church. God is looking for a person. God is looking for a woman that's going to have a backbone, that's not going to give in, that's going to step into the ring and say, I am here. This space is mine. I am not leaving this place. God put me here, and I'm going to stay here. The, the anointing is here. The Holy Spirit is here. There's an open heaven here, and I am not going nowhere. I'm here for the long haul. I'm here until the wheels fall off. I'm here until I go home to be with the Lord and there ain't nothing that's going to come here and shake me up. You have to be more tenacious. You have to be in your word constantly. You have to be in prayer always. Praying in the spirit. When you're not praying in English, you're praying in tongues. When you're not praying in tongues, you're singing. When you're not singing, you're rejoicing. When you're, rejo when you're not rejoicing, you're witnessing. It just continues to go on and on and on and on. And you just stay there. And anything comes in there, I mean, even a girl with tight shorts, bam, you got to go. You can't live here. You can't stay here. Every demon has to go. And when the devil sees that you are a person to contend with, God, God will promote you for ministry.
Like, I, I thought I could just sign up for ministry. <laughs> Jesus didn't just sign up for ministry. There was a process that he had to engage in. A very difficult and hard process. We make it too easy. Very, very hard. Because his assignment was very, very big. Isn't he so powerful? Jesus is just blows my mind. He's number one undefeated champion of the world. Our Jesus is number one undefeated worldwide universal champion of all the world of all of all the world. He stood up to the devil, the devil's best, and didn't give in. How awesome. And what we need to do collectively, like pastors enable us with this book, this growth book, collectively, worldwide, to go to war, really. To go to war. Because we have assignments every day from our growth book. There's revelation every day in our growth book. And if we stick to the book and we stick to our commitments to God, we will walk in unison like an army. We'll be so united that nothing could come in and divide this church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against this church because we are knitted so tight together that no demon can come into this place. We have to be united. And the way you start is not here. It's to take a book and implement it at home. Implement it at home with your family, with your children, with your wife, with your siblings, whoever you're living with. This, this book becomes a culture of your home. Don't even put it away. Put it right there on the right smack in the middle. Put a bunch of them everywhere. <laughs> this morning I, I got up and my wife gets up before me. And I, I go out there and she blesses me every morning because she's very committed to God's word. Before she eats... Before she, I'll say it, honey, combs her hair. <laughs> Before she gets her coffee. She spends time in that growth devotional book. And her Bible right there. And her growth book right there. And I just like, ooh. <laughs> Stay away. Be nice. This is a lot of anointing right there. And so we have this opportunity as a church to fast, to pray, to get breakthrough, to get deliverance, to grow. It's all, it, the table's been set. And all we have to do is step into the ring. Step into the ring. Amen? And what I want to do is I want to pray for some folks here tonight who are ready to do that. If you haven't made the commitment, and you know if you've made the commitment. If you're eating machaca burritos and drinking Diet Pepsi, you haven't made the commitment. You're still playing around. You're, you're doing the minimal and trying to get the maximum. Doesn't work. You need to turn, in these last days, you're going to need to go to the maximum. You're not going to make it. If there's pre-trib situations, you ain't going to make it. And if you don't make it here, I don't know if you're going to make it up there. I don't know. Wouldn't you like to know? 
If you could be hardcore about drinking, hardcore about the nightclub, hardcore about sleeping around, hardcore about drinking beer, hardcore about, hardcore about uh, going to the nightclub, hard, hardcore about uh, fixing up your car, why can't you be hardcore for Jesus? I mean, there wasn't a day that didn't go by when I wasn't smoking, drinking, snorting, partying. It was an everyday thing. Now, I flip the script. It's Jesus every single day. Every single There are no breaks. There is no me time. There is no balance. It is Jesus 100%. That is the only thing that works for me. I can't promise you anything else works. All that I know is what works for me. I'm either sold out or I'm a sellout. That's just me. That's just me. Maybe you can have a little bit of Jesus and be okay, but I'm not that way. I got to be in the ring or I'm out of the ring. For me, it's non-negotiable. And we want to get in the ring together. Amen? So let's stand to our feet. If you're in this room and you're ready to take that step, you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. We're going to play a video here in a sec. But I want to, those of you, just come forward right now. Just meet me here at the altar. Just come forward. Come forward. You say, I'm ready to do this thing. I'm ready to step into the ring. I'm tired of the devil perpetrating. I'm tired of uh, being ridiculed by the demons. I'm trying to be controlled by the demons. I'm trying to fall in, in these traps of the enemy. I just want to break free. And I'm going to commit. I know that's a tough word, but I'm, I'm going to commit to not a moment, but a lifestyle that's centered upon Jesus Christ. Jesus is no longer going to be someone I visit on Sunday. Jesus is going to be my Lord and Savior starting today. Meaning I do what he says. I don't do what I say. I do what Jesus says now. I don't do what my friends say. I don't, I don't do what, what the internet says. I, I do what Jesus says now. Come on, God is adding to our army here. Come on, let's celebrate. I know you're hungry. I know you're famished. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, all these people coming out. Let's celebrate Jesus, all these people coming out. Good job. Awesome. Good job. We're going to fight together. Amen. And all we're doing, guys, is reinforcing the victory that Jesus already accomplished. Isn't that awesome? He showed us, like, how to defeat the devil. It's right there. So all we're doing is enforcing what he showed us. That's it. It makes no sense, does it? It's so easy, but it makes no sense. It's hard to, it's hard to imagine. That you could have victory like this in your life. You want that? I believe you do. This is just a depiction of what Jesus kind of went through. It's, just, it's a Hollywood depiction, but it helps stir our imagination. And what, and what I really wanted to point out was how weak Jesus looked and maybe even felt. Especially after 40 days of fasting, my goodness, 40 minutes of fasting, I'm feeling that way already. 40 days in the wilderness on top of all, all that. Like that's a dry place. And what I see there is what I want to speak to you because you're coming out of the wilderness. And what God is showing us there is that even though you feel like maybe you're weak from being in this place, 
that your greatest opportunity for breakthrough happens there. In your weakest moment, maybe even right now, your greatest opportunity to break through is not when you're strong, but when you're weak. And that's when God's spirit moves the strongest. We all come to God weak. Nobody comes to God, I'm strong. I think I'm going to go to God today. Nobody does that. We come in our weakness and his strength, bam, lands on us. Amen? And that's what's going to happen right now. And it is that strength that's going to give you the power to resist the devil. Amen? And the important thing, the last thing I'm saying, I'm going to say this to you, is that Jesus didn't stay there. Like the wilderness is a temporary place. So that God can build his spirit in you. You learn how to use the spirit of God. And he took him out of the wilderness and turned the world right side up. When God pulls you out of, out of what you're trapped in, He's going to pull you out, and then he's going to send you to go pull others out. You know who those others are. You got some brothers that need to be pulled out. I'm talking to you. God is talking to you, my friend. You got some brothers that need to be pulled out. And God is counting on you to do it. Well, why can't God just do it? He's counting on you to do it. So let's stretch our hands up. You came to the altar today. Pray with me. Spirit of the living God, come upon me now. I receive the Holy Spirit. Open the heavens and rest upon me. Come upon me, Holy Spirit, right now. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, be my leader. I will follow you for the rest of my life. Forgive me, Jesus, of all my faults, of all my failures. Wash me by the blood. I am clean right now. I am holy. I am set apart for you. Train me. Get me ready to step into the ring. I am ready, Jesus. I surrender to you. You're my master, Jesus. You're my master. You're my master. Receive. Come on, receive. Just focus on Jesus. Stare, stare, he stare right at you. Stare at him. Just focus on Jesus. There you go. Receive. Receive the goodness of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Make sure you pick up a growth book. Make sure you take advantage of all the opportunities here to grow. Got tons of classes and all sorts of things in place for you to be successful in the ring. Come back Sunday. Don't miss, don't never miss church. When church is open, you, you're here. Don't miss church. It's like going to the gym. You're going to the gym together. This Sunday, we'll, we'll be here again, 9 o'clock. be a fantastic word. If you're a married couple, remember there's a Valentine's dinner coming up. Get your marriage in there. 
plug your, take your mirrors at a different season this year. We love you guys. Are you guys ready to walk together? You ready to grow together? Well, God bless you. You have an amazing evening. We love you. We'll see you this Sunday. God bless.